I am Slava Tsumba. Welcome to Conversations with Slava. Hey, Thank if, you. If you like this program, uh, you are welcome to support it on Patreon. Um, and today, I'm talking to Judy Evans, co-founder of Code Team, executive producer of the documentary, This Changes Everything, and writer of, of a book about divesting from uh, the unjust extractive war economy and building a just sustainable peace economy. Thank you. Jordi, why are you and uh, your colleagues who uh, think a pacifist group at the COP26 conference in Glasgow? Uh, so we're um, an anti-war group. We work to end war and bring the money home to the life-giving needs of our communities. Code Pink started when President Bush was frightening the American people into war with color-coded alerts, orange, red, and yellow. So we called Code Pink for peace. And we've been working to end war and militarism since then. And here at COP, uh, the big elephant in the room, and, and we're not allowed in the room, is that militarism is the greatest single industrial polluter on the planet. And it is not being discussed, it is not being measured, those emissions are not even in the conversation. So we're here to say, why are you keeping military emissions out of the conversation when it is actually militarism that supports the capitalism that's destroying the planet. And, you know, when they say they're making militaries and make the world safe for the people, they actually just protect corporations to extract and destroy and oppress. Kate Aronoff wrote uh, an article on November 4th with White House new climate strategy, let businesses solve it. You just spoke about uh, uh, the profit motive in destroying the planet. So what do you think of the strategy to let um, corporations sort uh, the problems out? So that's what you hear a lot at COP. There are more corporations and oil companies here than there are representatives of government. And um, so it's very um, problematic to think that corporations are going to solve the problem that they have created. Corporations are the problem. Their greed and extraction and violence and disregard for the needs of the people and basically disregard for life, certainly disregard for the planet, is the problem. They are not going to be able to solve it. Okay, have you been able to uh, speak to, to representatives of these corporations? Uh and uh, to confront them. Have you spoken to members of the states uh, threatened by climate change, indigenous leaders in Glasgow? Sure, well, let me start first with those who are um, creating the problem. And even um, governors of states in the United States that are here thinking that they are climate champions. They were very disturbed by um, our question about militarism and started to defend the military. And then again asked, but don't you understand that no matter what you're fighting for here, if you don't talk about ending militarism and war, it won't matter because of the size of those emissions. They basically ran away, took everybody's you know cards numbers and probably won't let people back in tomorrow. Um, but at the same time, we did hear from those that are on the receiving end of this militarism, and they definitely want to end the, the military and the militarism. And we, we heard from people in the Mariana Islands that are now being destroyed because of US aggression on China. We heard from people in Nigeria who where US military is protecting the oil companies there and what it's done to whole communities that have been devastated where he described it as the people drink the oil water, they eat 
they grow their plants out of the oil soil and then they die in the oil ground and that it's all that the, the toxicity of people's lives are created toxic by the support of the military of these corporations to do what they're doing and, and devastating and then we heard from someone from papua new guinea where he talked about five hundred thousand indigenous people being killed by the militaries that protect those that are destroying the forests so you know we say it's um it's a military boot print why because the corporations leave a footprint but the the military leaves a boot, boot print because not only do they do everything the corporations do but they also disrupt communities they um leave toxic waste that is the forever toxic wastes they um disturb whole ecosystems that can never be healed again and you know let's talk about one climate change that doesn't seem to be discussed and that's a nuclear winter and with all these nuclear weapons and all this instability of these countries that are not learning how to solve their conflicts in ways of diplomacy but instead of ways with weapons uh, we get closer and closer to a real nuclear winter and if you want to know what that looks like that if the weapons that the us and russia have were deployed against each other the temperature would drop below what it was in the ice age so because there would be no sun coming through the clouds there would be no food grown so that's a climate change that no one talks about and that is what uh, the u.s military is wanting to spend a trillion dollars on at code pink we're calling for not only everybody in the united states but everyone across the world because u.s militarism affects everyone just like u.s consumerism affects everyone the the emissions on the planet are largely caused by this little country that's got you know three and a half percent of the people but causes an enormous amount of its damage both by our consumerism and by our militarism and by our creation of weapons um you know they don't even count the emissions of the creation of weapons which you know if you follow the creation stream it, it's huge um so if if you were to look at the what this is the, the the solution has to be to cut the pentagon and we have a plan to cut the pentagon by 360 billion dollars it is written out it is very clear it is doable barbara lee is carrying the bill and it must happen and we need global voices and we need everyone who has a need in an organization in the united states the money they need for that is in the military budget it is in the pentagon budget and i just want to say that in the last 20 years of the war on terror united states taxpayers have been fleeced by the amount of 22 trillion dollars that has gone into militarism and war instead of into what we do need is to move off of fossil fuels and create a new energy system. Where can one find the information about that bill? It's on the Code Pink website. Uh, it's actually codepink.org off our homepage. Um, it's the, it's, yeah, it's right off our homepage, Barbara Lee calling for cutting the Pentagon in half. We also have a, a website called cutthepentagon.org and it's also there in actions that you can take. And, we, and the website cutthepentagon.org is ways that if you have a, an organization, you can join the coalition because we are disrupting in DC every day until they cut the Pentagon. And we, if you wanna join us, if you wanna do one around your issue, we're supporting anyone that wants to raise up the issue cut the pentagon and that means cut the pentagon for the people that build back better bill is one seventh of what we spend on militarism instead we should take that money for militarism and have um a bill that funds all the needs of the people not only in the us but across the world could you please put the environmental impact of the pentagon uh, 
and uh, of militarism in general in proportion. How so it's it? larger. Yeah, so it's the, the problem is, is it hasn't been measured, but it's um, larger. The emissions, just the emissions are larger than 140 countries. So um, and that's just the emissions. And, you know, the, the, the trail of all the costs are enormous, you know, it doesn't include like, what does it cost to make these weapons and who are the contributors and what does it cost them to make the parts? And, you know, you would have to do a long tale of what all these costs are. And then when things are destroyed, then there's the rebuilding costs. And that's a huge number. So the, the cost to not only the, um, what is used from the planet, but it also the emissions and the destruction of the soil, which releases carbon is also not measured. So there's compounding effects of um, what the cost of militarism is on the planet. But for sure we know it is the number one industrial polluter on the planet. Your response to people claiming that this kind of cut to the Pentagon budget is a gift to Moscow and Beijing. Well, I'm not sure what that means. Um, since we live in a very uh, tenuous world right now, the most important thing that we should be all working for is cooperation. We need to, all governments need to be cooperating. If anyone is advocating for war, they are advocating for the end of life on the planet. It, they are playing Russian roulette with the lives of everyone on the planet. Right now, everyone should rise up and say, no, you should be cooperating. There is no reason to have all these weapons. They talk, they talk about state security. State security is bullshit. State security is just a way for the rich to get richer and for the greed to continue. We need human security and human security has nothing to do with war. Humans are not made secure by war. No human is made secure by war. States are given power by war and we have to stop it. And as people of the world, we have to stop funding it. That is our tax dollars across the world that is funding the destruction of our futures. You championed environmental causes as director of administration in California Governor Jerry Brown's first administration. Jody, what advice would you give to organizations and people trying to mitigate global warming right now? So um, just like um, we're asking governments to do, the first thing we should think about is cooperating, about being allies, and about moving forward together to save the planet. And that each one of us is going to be doing what needs to be done that we're the best at, and not worrying about everybody being under uh, in the same organization, but that we need a very, very big tent. So that don't get stuck in the weeds, because corporations and governments try to pull you under by taking you into the weeds. Just be strong and, and articulate and clear about what needs to happen. Don't, don't argue with them because they're gonna try to take you into the what ifs. There's no what if. There is only what if they do not stop their devastation and destruction and extraction and oppression. There will not be life on this planet anymore. And so there is only stop. We don't listen to the but what ifs and, and you know, net zeros. There, it's just all, all more manipulation by corporations that we've been listening to while they have been destroying the planet that we need for ourselves and our, our offspring, uh, you know, for, as the indigenous say, for another seven generations. So, you know, start with, I always start with this in the morning. How many generations of people had to work so hard to preserve life that I could have life. And we live in a couple of generations where the destruction of the planet and the destruction of possibility of a life on the planet has happened. We are here in this time and it is up to us 
to turn that around and not to listen to the bullshit. And another thing is, it I call it the war economy. So there's a war economy. It is the extractive, destructive, oppressive economy, and it is what war serves. And I know I will not be able to end war until I end the war economy because war serves the war economy. If there was no war economy, there would be nothing for war to do. But there's a peace economy. And it is the giving, sharing, caring, thriving, relational, resilient economy without which none of us would be alive. And we learned that in COVID. I used to say this years ago and people weren't sure what I was talking about. We all know what is essential for life now and to go back to normal and not understand that we have been used by corporate greed for a couple of centuries now, but certainly in the last, you know, five decades, it's been on a rampant spree. And that militarism is something that you pay for that destroys the possibility of your life. And it destroys lives right now that are on the edge. And so we should all be working for life or we are going to be one of the casualties. And that means getting along, that means working together, that means stepping yourself out of the war economy. Get yourself out of the war economy. At Code Pink, we have 21 ways to divest yourself from the war economy. And once you do, you will be even a, a greater champion for the planet. You'll know what your path is and you won't be uh, serving the war economy that is destroying the, the planet. You are a contributor to Beautiful Trouble, a toolbox for revolution. What advice do you give to those protesting, for example, uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema, so uh, they don't uh, lose uh, public support uh, and uh, don't uh, act counterproductively? Well, if you read Beautiful Trouble, we talk about strategies and tactics and methods and tools, right? Well, first of all, the first strategy is that um, you have to pick your targets wisely and you, and you have to really make them hurt to change. And what we've seen with both cinema and mansion is they are so disconnected from the people that there's nothing, they're like Teflon. So when you see a lot of Teflon happening, The thing you need to realize is that there's education that has to happen in their districts because you have to get rid of them. And so you need to figure out where is the best place to put myself. You could put your, I, I say I don't like pushing rocks up a hill because they fall back on me and I only have so much energy. So you need to find out what is possible. And when there are two people that are so narcissistic and so shut down that they have dug themselves in a hole, don't go dig yourself in a hole with them. Find out what needs to happen so that they're no longer in the decision-making position. And you know, we watch them derail a lot already. They're there to be troublemakers for their own and, and you know, aggrandizement. And uh, we call it getting buzzsawed by things. Like we didn't get ourselves buzzsawed by Trump because we knew he was going to play out this whole thing. Instead, we went to the communities and we worked in every city and showed them how they were invested in war. And we organized young people and we went after universities for being divested in war when they say, you know, that they're committed to peace. And we went over foundation after foundations and moved $60 billion dollars and So you have to figure out, like reading Beautiful Trouble is about what is your strategy and what is your tactic? And one of the clearest things is, is you want to go after the low hanging fruit first. And because when you can move people away, peel people away, then you leave the horrible people standing alone. Um, they're no longer seen as these heroes they want to be seen as. They're seen as kind of toxic individuals. And that's basically what we've been trying to do with both of them, is expose the toxicity, expose the narcissism and the selfishness so that they have no ground underneath them. At least they will fall through in the election, next election cycle. What uh, um, do your earrings symbolize, Jody? So one earring is for peace and one 
and one earring is for feminism. And so we um, at Code Pink have a feminist form policy that we stand on in our work. And um, you can find it at um, Code Pink Feminist Form Policy Project. Thank you very much for this interview, Jody. I wish you and your colleagues uh, all best in Glasgow and all best for you. So I want to say something before I leave. What was so exciting was to be in all these marches and be in the streets and handing out our War is Not Green stickers and to, you know, I would say, did you know the military was the largest industrial polluter on the planet? And people would say, no, I didn't know that. But when you explain it to them, they grab it and they want to do something about it. And I think to have had something like this hidden for so long that, you know, war is already wrong. And to add this to the mix has been really in energizing to people to get more engaged on this issue to stop militarism. And that has been heartening.